Yeah, praise the Lord. Give glory to God in Jesus' name. So again, this is the gospel of the kingdom of God that everyone needs a savior. As everyone's born in Adam, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. The scriptures have concluded all under sin and the promise by faith of Jesus Christ may be given to all who believe. See, ladies and gentlemen, through one man, sin into the world and death through sin and thus death has spread to all men because all have sinned by one man's disobedience. Many were made sinners. So also by one man's righteous act, many were made righteous. We are all born of the same blood from every tongue, every tribe, every nation with a corrupt heart, an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. And as it is appointed to men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So the Lord Jesus Christ was also offered once to bear the sins of many. For those who wait for him, he'll appear again a second time, apart from sin for salvation. There is one God, the Holy One of Israel, one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The wages of sin is death. Doesn't matter what tongue, tribe, and nation you're from. But we outside of Christ are under the wrath of God. The wrath of God is a fierce anger of the Lord that abides upon every person outside of covenant with Him. The wage of sin is death means that because of sin we die. Everyone needs a savior. The savior God has provided is his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is a trustworthy statement and it is worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You shall call his name, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. It is by grace that we are saved through faith and that none of ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. We are all once foolish, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures. But when the kindness and the love of God towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only hope here today for anyone to be saved. Every tongue, every tribe, every nation is made of one blood, one fallen nature. In sin we're born, in Adam we die, in Christ we're made alive when you believe on his name. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. He who believes on the Son has everlasting life. He who believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. The Lord Jesus said, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Friends, true freedom is in Christ. 
Everyone is a slave of sin. He who commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, whosoever the son makes free shall be free indeed. Jesus came to set the captives free. We are slaves of Satan in bondage to our corrupt hearts. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. We can never be good enough to meet God's standard. God requires perfect obedience to his holy law. But all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every mouth is stopped and all the world is guilty before God. You need to be made not guilty before God. And that cannot happen by anything you do, by any means, not by any religious system, not by any charitable deed or good work. He says we are all like an unclean thing and all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Jesus Christ became a man. The God who created the universe, the eternal son of God became a man and lived on the earth perfectly before his father, fulfilling all righteousness. He did the will of God. He obeyed unto death, even the death of the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross to pay the full penalty for sin. The one time sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ pacified the wrath of God. When the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, he made the atonement. God judged his son in the law place of his people. God made him, the Lord Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for his people, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? The wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. All those who forsake the Lord will be consumed. For the Lord God said, I will punish the world for their evil and their wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. All the pride of man will be humbled. The loftiness of men will be bowed down and the Lord alone will be exalted on that day. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God is commanding all people everywhere to repent. He has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. And he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. The Lord Jesus paid the penalty for sin in full He's the only hope for you today to be saved from the judgment of God. That's impending upon you. That's impending upon our nation. Our nation's forsaken the Lord. And when an ungodly nation forsakes God, it will be consumed in due time. The scripture says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Turn from idols to God to serve the living and true God today. Praise the Lord. That each one may receive the things done in his body according to what he's done, whether good or evil. How about you give it a break?
He says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Can you give it a break for like... It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He says, if we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. But a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation that would devour the adversaries. He says, all the gods of the nations are idols. See, what we are, the, the issue in, our, in the world... And with our hearts is idolatry. You love your sports teams more than God. We love our celebrity. All the things and places and things that that are not Him, we put on our throne of our hearts and make it into our God. These are idols. The Lord God made the heavens, and the Lord Jesus Christ is a Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. He created you. And he came into the world to save wicked people like us from the power of sin and Satan to bring us back to him to be in love with him. A personal, living relationship with the living God that you cannot obtain by anything you do, but Christ obtained. The Lord Jesus Christ obtained eternal redemption through the blood of his cross. For all who would believe upon him, God commands you to repent to turn from your wicked ways, to turn from your idols, surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We have a nation that's going to get over to sodomite marriage, the murder of the unborn, to countless innocent bloodshed upon bloodshed, wickedness to the core. We're approving of every false way and contradiction to a holy God that every way that God hates, we say is good. In the eyes of the Lord, evil is good and good is evil. It's all backwards in this degenerate age of apostasy. And God commands you to return to him because a day is coming and burning like an oven when all the proud yes all who do wickedly will be stubble for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great god and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own peculiar people, zealous for good works. For those who profess to know God here today, for those who profess that they love God and they go to church, the scripture says, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is hewn down and thrown in the fire. He says, examine yourselves as to whether you're in the faith. Jesus will turn to many on the day of judgment who call him Lord, pastors, street preachers, Sunday school teachers, choir members. He will say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. If you don't have Christ, you don't have life. If you're living apart from Christ, you're living under the condemnation of the law. You must be born again. You must be born in the life of Christ. Look at the perversion of this filthy mouth and this man. Talk, talking about sodomy and rejoicing in sodomy. All kinds of wickedness. And you need to repent. If that's all men want to do is kill the unborn, that's an abomination to God. They kill a baby just like they did in the Old Testament. They sacrifice babies to idols. They sacrifice them to Baal and Ashtaroth. They think they were going to receive a blessing upon their family. And that's a lie. It's like you think, it's like you think if you're going to have that unwanted pregnancy, you have that child, you're not going to be able to support that child. Well, then why did you even commit the act before you did it? The Bible says to flee fornication. Any sin a man commits is without the body, but he that commits fornication sins against his own body. So we understand this today. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, therefore he shall reap. This nation will reap the consequence of 70 million babies killed. This nation will reap the consequence of ordaining sodomite homosexual marriage, which God hates. It's totally contrary to God's word. There's nothing in the Bible that approves this. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for that sin. He was not pleased. He's not pleased with this nation. The Bible says a nation and kingdom that will not hear the voice of the Lord God will destroy. We must understand that. Is a warning. You could be set free from the wounds of this nation that are incurable without Christ. Only Christ can set you free. And 
No political leader could set us free. Only Christ could set us free from the bondage of sin. Only he could set us free from the damnation of hell. Jesus sacrificed his own life at the cross, the just to the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, quickened by the Spirit of God. And that is that is the important question. Are we born again? Have we been saved from our sin? And Jesus Christ is that Savior today, folks. He is Lord today. Today, turn to the Savior. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. It says, let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord our God. For you will have mercy upon him. See, God will have mercy upon you. And you turn to him, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God today, and he will have mercy upon the sinner. The soul that seeks him will find him. He says, look unto me and be saved, all ye ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. As he says, how the Lord search the heart. And try the reins to give every man according to his works, according to the fruit of his doings. So God searches men's hearts. The Bible says he tests the hearts, he tries the mind. And the Bible says we'll be judged according to our works, according to what we've done here. So without Christ, we have produced unrighteous fruit. The Bible says the tree is known by its fruit. The tree will not produce evil fruit, and evil tree will not produce good fruit. He says the axe is laid at the root of the tree. And you know, whatsoever tree brings forth not good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. So without Christ, we go on to eternity in hell. The Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die, and then after this the judgment. So we understand that our nation here has gone contrary to God's word. Therefore, it's cursed of God right now. The nation must repent. The people must repent. You individually are accountable to God. And unless you repent, you will perish. And we got to go by God's standard, what God's word says. We're not going to compromise us. Hundreds of thousands of churches in America have compromised the truth of God by allowing homosexual marriage in their churches, allowing women ministers in their churches. When the Bible says contrary, it says otherwise. And homosexuality is an abomination to God. Women aren't preachers. Yes, they have a role in a church, but the man is the preacher. That's how God's ordained it. That's how God's made it. So we follow what God says, not our own standard, not our own man-made standard. We follow what God's word says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God would be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So the scripture, the Bible says the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's what God's Word does. That's why we don't want it present in this nation because it discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. It exposes the deeds. It exposes the sin the sin that we're inclined to commit. That's what the Word of God does. Folks, would you turn to the Savior today? Yes. Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I say unto thee, he must be born again. Friends, be born again is the supernatural work of God. Is at the moment of regeneration, friends, we're told in the book of Titus that we're saved not by the of righteousness which we have done, but according to God's mercy by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Regeneration means Genesis again. What happened in the book of Genesis? The creation. What happens in regeneration? It's a new creation. Therefore, the name is Christ. The Bible says we have a condition before God. We're born into sin, shaping in iniquity. It doesn't matter which family you're born into. It doesn't matter which race we are. That's just foolishness. It matters where we stand with God, where our heart's at with God today. If we have been set free from our sin and hell, and we have been redeemed by the sacrifice of the Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who knew no sin but became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God through him. So how are you made righteous? The only way we can be made righteous is through Christ. We have no ability to be made righteous by our own good deeds. No, it's by the sacrifice that Jesus Christ paid, becoming a sacrifice at the cross, uh, a willful sacrifice for sinners, to go in place of them. As the Bible says, for there's one God and one mediator between God and men, and that's the man Christ Jesus. And he intercedes on the behalf of the sinner. 
And they come as they are, as the Bible says, he saves to the uttermost, and he saves sinners. Jesus. He says, I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. But Jesus Christ, he's not come to call the righteous. No, they that are whole need a physician, they that need him, Jesus Christ is the only one that can set you free from sin. But I don't think many of us understand how urgency this is today. And if we die right now, we're going to go to hell without Christ. The Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die, then after this is the judgment. Yes, after this is the judgment. So what is our hope in? It can't be in a man. It needs to be in Christ, the eternal God, the God-man. He became God in flesh on this earth for three and a half years. And right now, seated at the right hand of the throne of God, whom the fullness of the Godhead draws bodily in Christ. The Bible says, yes, the Bible says God hates the hands that shed innocent blood, but if you repent of your sin, you can be forgiven. If I tell God I have an abortion, will you forgive me? If you have a true repentant sorrow over it, yeah. So we understand, as abortion is sin, God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. So we must understand that. People ask the question, many ask, of course, it's sin. God hates it. It's, it's, it's modern-day child sacrifice, as they did in the Old Testament, as they do now, and pretty much the same way. So we understand this today. He says, a nation and kingdom that will not hear the voice of the Lord shall perish be made desolate. That's what the Bible says. Nation and kingdom that will not hear the voice of the Lord will perish. Because they're relying on their own standard of righteousness. They're relying on their own set of rules, but not God's word. We have God's word as a standard to live by. The Bible says, let us here come to the conclusion of the whole matter to fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it's good or evil. But folks, you understand God is going to bring every one of your works, my works, every person out here individually will face God. They'll give an account to God for their life. The Bible says every out of word that men shall speak, they'll give an account thereof in the day of judgment. The question is, are you prepared to meet thy God? If we were to die today, the Bible says our life's a vapor. It is here and it vanishes away. You're not guaranteed another second on this earth. Are you prepared to meet God? Are you prepared to give an account to God? As the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, ye shall enter in and be saved and go in and out and find pasture. He said, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. He that believes on me shall never thirst. So he is the bread of life. The Redeemer, the righteous Lord, loves righteousness. The Bible says the Lord tries the righteous. The wicked in him that loves violence, his soul hates. He said, upon the wicked will rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. The righteous Lord loves righteousness, and his countenance doth behold the upright. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. They cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. He says, the Lord of hosts, the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up shall be brought low. As we just finished the month of June, you think God is pleased with the month of June in this nation? As we, we appoint it to be sodomite homosexual month, you think God's pleased with that? You think God's going to bless a nation that does that? No way. God abhors this sin of homosexuality. He hates it. He hates sin. He hates sin. But when you have a nation that's given over to it and supporting it, that's a major problem. A major problem before a holy God who's created male and female to marry. So anything else is blasphemous to God. Everything else is a smack in the face to God. But you understand, he's going to repay. Vengeance is his. He gets the final say. And people just aren't getting away with these things without God repaying for their deeds or paying for their sin. Of course he's going to repay. He's God. He created man. The Bible says, in the dust of the ground, man is formed, and the dust he's going to return. Folks, he created man. That's why the Bible says, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. But our eternal soul, it will give an account to God for our sin. 
and you give an account to God for the life we have lived here. He says, he that sins wrongs his own soul. He said, all they that hate me love death. Well, folks, it's a hot day out here, but if we don't have Christ, it's going to be a lot hotter in hell. It's very important today we're born again. Very important we're saved from our sin. Because you may hate liberals, but you'll join them in hell if you don't have Christ. That's the reality. Because no one's better. Without Christ, we're all going to the same hell. So we need to be saved. We need to be saved. So Jesus Christ is the only one that could satisfy those needs. Jesus Christ is the only one that could give you everlasting life. The Bible says he saves to the other uttermost. And you come to the cross as you are, vile and wretched sinners, as we are. We're born into sin, shaped in iniquity. We are covered in sin the moment we're born. We're born into a cursed world, and therefore we are born under the curse of sin in Adam. The Bible says in Adam all die, but even so in Christ all should be made alive. For by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, but by another one's obedience many were made righteous. So we need the second Adam, we need Christ to be made righteous. We need to be saved from our sin through Christ Jesus and Him alone. He says, look unto me and be saved, all ye ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So today, who are you looking to for hope? Is it Christ or is it a man? Jesus Christ is the only hope for this country. Jesus Christ is the only hope for you today individually. And you're going to give an account to him. Every individual that has ever walked this earth will. The president of this country will give an account to God. If he's not born again, he will go to hell, just like anyone else. So we must understand that today. We need a Savior. Jesus Christ is that Savior. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven that is given among men whereby we must be saved. The Bible says we must be saved. And the, the, the only other option is hell. There's no in between. There's no purgatory for anyone that's religious out here in Roman Catholic. No, it is heaven or hell. As the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. So it's immediately. Once we leave this earth, once we stop breathing, we go on to eternity. If we know Christ, we go into the glory in the presence of the Lord. We don't know Christ, we are condemned to hell. Once we're in Christ, we're no longer under the condemnation of sin. We are set free from sin. We are set free from the torments of hell. We are no longer vessels of wrath. We become vessels of mercy. So today, what are you doing with the cross of Jesus Christ? What have you done with the cross of Jesus Christ? You understand? He commits sin. The Bible says he who commits sin is a slave to sin. The Bible says that if we yield ourselves, or whatever we yield ourselves to, we will obey. Whether it's sin or obedience unto righteousness. Today, ask yourself, what are you yielding yourself to? Have you been saved from your sin? Have you been redeemed? By the blood of the Lamb. Well, the Bible says we're going to separate ourselves from the world. We're not going to desire to continue in sin. As he says, how can we continue in sin while grace abounds? He says, God forbid. Well, absolutely not. He says, love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. So we, we, we think that you, we have this month here that just passed in June. People think they could, this is love, homosexual marriage. It's not love. It's lust. It's of Satan. It's not of God. You must understand that today. God's word says in Leviticus, it also says in the New Testament, that homosexuality is an abomination to God. You must understand that. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, he says, Are ye not the unrighteous who not inherit the kingdom of God? Folks, and the Bible speaks of who will not inherit God's kingdom. It says, neither fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, effeminate, meaning homosexuals, abusing themselves of mankind, liars, thieves, covetous, drunkards, extortioners, revilers will not inherit God's kingdom. The Bible says men are guilty of these sins. They will not inherit God's kingdom. They will go on to eternity in hell. So we turn from these sins and we're set free from being in bondage to these sins. We're no longer slaves to these sins, but we obey Christ, we obey His Word, and therefore we're not condemned to hell any longer. We'll have a new eternal home in heaven with the Savior, Jesus Christ. So we must understand this today. Man with man, women with women is an abomination to God. It's contrary to God's Word, and God is angry with the wicked every day. 
for today. He says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He says, but that they would turn themselves and live. They would turn from their sin and live. It's this hope for the homosexual. There's hope for the murderer. There's hope for the thief. And that's only in Christ. The only hope is in Christ. There's hope for the drunkard or the drug addict. It's only in Christ. As he says to the uttermost, only he can set you free today from your iniquity. Today you turn from your sin, you depart from iniquity, follow after righteousness. The Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. So freedom, what is freedom? Freedom is really in Christ and we're born again. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So today, the only way you can have true freedom is in Christ. When you repent of your sin, you're no longer a slave to it. You're free. You're free from sin when you turn to Christ. So we understand this today. He says, let us here come to the conclusion. We come to this conclusion. We come to this understanding to fear God and keep His commandments. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Folks, are you despising God's wisdom today, God's law, God's word? Oh, you're in a country that goes contrary to God's word, passes laws that are contrary to God's word, such as homosexual marriage. It's an abomination to God. And what do we do? We condone it. We dedicate a month to support pride. You know what pride is? It's not love. It's lust. That's Satan's version of love. It's contrary to God's word. It's deplorable. It's detestable in God's eyes. Pride month is an abomination to God. Homosexuals are an abomination to God. This is what the Bible says in Leviticus. The New Testament also says the same thing. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, homosexuals. Abuse themselves at mankind, liars, thieves, covetous, extortioners, drunkards, revilers will not inherit God's kingdom. So today you're guilty before a holy and just God. If you do not repent, you will perish. He says, he that sins only wrongs his own soul. He said, all they that hate me love death. By you committing willful acts of sin against God, you are showing that you hate God by your deeds, by the deeds that you have done. Because the tree is known by its fruit. The ax is laid at the root of the tree, and whatsoever tree would bring forth not good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Folks, that is eternal fire, everlasting fire. Without Christ, that's what awaits you this day today, that you must repent. The urgency today for you to repent. Folks, you're guilty before God. Turn from your sin. Oh, my God. You were born into sin, shaping in iniquity. See, the reason why you're on me right now because I came against homosexuality and you're probably a homosexual and you support it. That's why you're on me because you hate God. That's why you are a homosexual. You hate God. You hate his law. You hate him. That's why you commit willful acts of sin against him. It's, it's, it's obvious. That's why we commit sin because we hate our maker. We rebel against our maker. Well, you understand. The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. Folks, on Judgment Day, you are accountable for every lie, every word of gossip, every act of fornication, every drunkenness, every act of drunkenness, every act of adultery and idolatry. You are accountable to a holy and just God on the day of recompense. You understand this? There's no fear of God in your heart. You're going to live a life in willful, habitual sin. He said if we willfully sin after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Jesus Christ was the one-time sacrifice for sinners, the just or the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, quickened by the Spirit of God. Folks, the only way you are quickened is by the Spirit of God. The Spirit gives life. You understand? Wherefore the Son shall make you free, that ye shall be free indeed. Only Jesus Christ can give you true freedom. 
Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You only have freedom in Christ. Once you repent of your sin, and you give Christ all that sin that is on your account, you will be free. No longer a slave to sin, but obedience unto righteousness. Through Christ Jesus, the one-time sacrifice, the one who is holy and harmless and undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens, Folks, you understand Jesus Christ is holy, and he requires holiness to enter his kingdom. He requires righteousness to enter his kingdom. And without Christ, without living a holy life, we will not see the Lord. God is commanding you personally to repent. You're not saved outside of Christ. You're dead in sins outside of Christ. You're under the judgment of God outside of Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ came. He set the practice free. He who the Son makes free shall be free indeed. You're not free. You're not. You should have been free to deliver an independent nation, an independent state. But independently from God, you're an abomination of the Lord as an idol. Independently from God, you're an enemy of God as an idol. Independently from God, you're born in death. In Adam or die, you're dead in trespass and sin. You're an abomination of the filthy righteous world. Righteousness is a call of themselves good works. You can't earn from God. You need a Savior. Jesus came to save a wretch like you to take you out of Adam. To give you a new heart of flesh. To take out the heart of stone. That hates him to bring you in an everlasting covenant with God. Jesus said you must be born again. When you're born of the Spirit of God, you become a child of God. Until then, you're a child of wrath, a cursed of God, and there is law. Cursed is everyone who's not continuing all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. He requires perfect obedience. He requires perfection in thought, word, and deed. But all have sinned against God. There's none who does good, no, not one. Every human from every tongue, tribe, and nation, the man the religious system, is guilty before God. Every mouth is stopped, and all the world is guilty before God. Guilt is expiated to the cross of Christ when you believe that guilt is expiated the moment you trust in the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ because he bore the wrath he made the atonement he died as a substitute he bore the curses of disobedience upon himself he drank the cup of divine wrath of the drags he drank the wrath of God poured out the cup prepared for him to drink for all of his people to bear their sins to take their punishment to pay Let's their to Lord Jesus he Christ. did it all you must come to him alone and if you don't do so the wrath of God remains upon you your nation to be overthrown as Sodom in due time for its sodomy and the murder of the unborn and all the legalization of laws opposed to our holy God, drugs and sexual immorality and every wicked thing. He said, I will lift your skirts over your faces and show your nations your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. I will cast abominable filth upon you and make you vile and make you a gazing stock. He said it in Nineveh all the days of old before he overthrew that nation. It is no longer a nation and never will be again. He will say that to every nation, according to Ezekiel 14, 13, when a land sins against me by trespassing grievously, I will stretch out my hand against it. I will cut off its supply of bread. I will send famine upon it and cut off man and beasts from it. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee, thou who dwellest in the crest of the rock. Though your sin is high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from thence will I bring you down, declares the Lord. Humble yourselves. Personally, pride brings you under the wrath of God, brings you under condemnation. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Here he is condemnation. Praise the Lord. I seek the Lord Jesus. Turn from your sin. Repent of your sin. This land is committed great whoredom by departing from the Lord. But God's people are suffer outside the gate. Please turn to Lord Jesus. Turn from your sin. The works of darkness apart from Christ. We reprove them by the grace of God. Examine yourself to see in the faith. We grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Whereas our nation is going to be overthrown. Please turn from your sin. Turn to Christ. The Lord will come upon everything proud and everything looking up to be brought low. Today, if you hear His voice. Harden not your hearts, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the I seek the Lord Jesus today. You must the be born Lord again. Jesus is the truth. The Lord Jesus is the life. Everyone outside of Christ is dead in trespass and sins. There's none who does good, no, not one. You see, we're all like an unclean thing. Every person is guilty before God outside of Christ. Every person is the enemy of God outside of Christ. Every person apart from Christ is in great danger. The wrath of God is coming upon the church of the today. All who sinned against God, we need righteousness and peace by faith. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. There's no other name. 
unto heaven given among men, by which we must be saved. There's no peace to the wicked. They're not free outside of Christ. They're a slave of sin, a slave of Satan. And even the Son makes free, shall be free indeed. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one. Nice to Jesus. He must be born again. Day, every knee will bow to Christ, every tongue will confess that he is the Lord thy God. Nice. He must every be born again. Every knee will bow to his, his lordship. You don't do it now to be in the lake of fire. When he casts you in the hellfire, the Lord Jesus said you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. It's appointed for men once to die, but after this is the judgment. Your wounds are incurable here in America. We've gone a hoarding from God. This land has committed great freedom by departing from the Lord. The day of the Lord will come cruel. With both wrath and fierce anger, we turn, turn to the Lord. Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Turn towards God. Come to Christ tonight. This is the gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel of the grace of God. The Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, came to save his people from their sins by doing the will of God. He obeyed unto death all the requirements of divine law. He laid down his life to die in the law place of guilty sinners to bear the curse of sin. For all those who believe, you must believe on him to be justified before God. The eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and he will destroy it from the face of the earth. He comes again to kill his enemies. He comes again to overthrow the throne of kingdoms. He said, I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. Pride of man is going to be humbled. Ladies and gentlemen, you may hear his voice. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's here. Let the wicked forsake his ways. And the unknown oh, turn from your iniquities today. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again. And to our God, we will abundantly pray. Seek the Lord in will, but she broke out like a fire. Friends are in great danger. No one is righteous. Everyone is guilty before God of a personal sin. Jesus is the only Savior. No religion can save you. Everyone outside of Christ is going to be eternally destroyed. God commands all men, women, everyone to repent. He has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man who he has ordained. And he has given assurance yeah, yeah, yeah. of this all by raising Praise the Lord. Him. Guys, repent of this sin. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous one to an end are safe. When the Lord Jesus returns again, it's going to be ruthless in the execution of his judgment. You need to make sure you're born of the Spirit and you have his righteousness. And if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, examine yourselves as to whether you're in the faith. You are in great danger. Your nation's in great danger. We are going to be overthrown as it was in the days of Sodom in due time. Your wounds are incurable. It will never be great again. It will never be straight again. God abhors your country. It's a land full of idols and abominable iniquity, full of sodomites and the murder of the unborn. That innocent blood will be avenged by a holy God. And you're commanded right now to repent and bow to Christ and enter his kingdom for the everlasting kingdom of God. You need to be born in the life of Christ. You don't realize the danger you're in. It's the final stage of warning in your nation before great destruction of the Almighty. This nation is going to be overthrown. Flee from the wrath to come. Don't believe the promise of men. It's only a temporal reprieve. One day you're going to have a liberal horn and arms in a communist nation. The constitution is going to be removed. And you're going to bow to the Antichrist. God is not mocked. God is angry. These things have been decreed in the scriptures. For the return of the Son of Man, a strong delusion to believe a lie. That you all may be condemned. You do not believe the truth, but at pleasure in wickedness. Christ came to save sinners, save them from the wrath of God, save them from eternal damnation in the fires of hell. He bore the curse of sin. He bore the judgment of God for all who believe. Your only hope is the cross of Christ. God commands you to repent and to believe the gospel here tonight. How can a sinner escape the torments of hell? Well, the only possible way for you is through Christ, through the cross, through the blood that he shed at the cross. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Jesus Christ gave his own life, one-time sacrifice, the just to the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, quickened by the Spirit of God. Folks, how are you quickened today? How are you given life? You're given life by the Spirit of God. Understand right now in the flesh, which is born of flesh, is flesh. That's all the desires are going to be is the flesh, which is born of spirit, is spirit. How important and urgent is this message for you today? Because you're so close to death. We're just one heartbeat away from eternity. We're just one breath away from eternity and meeting and facing the one who created us. The eternal God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the everlasting Father, the King of all kings and the Lord of lords. Are you prepared to meet him?
You would die today. Are you prepared to meet thy God? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you been saved from your sin? So that's the question today. That's what really matters. Not who's going to win next year's presidential election. Who are you serving? The Lord Jesus Christ? Or your own lust? Who's in control of all things? As the Bible says, God puts up one and brings down another. Now he's in control who the president of this nation is and the kings of the world and all these different things. He's in control. And it's all going to be according to his will. He does all things according to the counsel of his own will. So do we understand that today? God does. He's the creator of all things, visible, invisible. Things present, things to come, powers, principalities. All things are created by him, for him. The Bible says we're without excuse. We're without excuse. We're created in the image of God. The dust of the ground we were formed, the dust we're just going to return. That's why he said, what good does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What are we gaining here? We're not taking it with us to eternity. We're not taking it with us to hell. Because if we're serving sin, if we're serving material things here, they're just going to stay here. The money's going to stay here, but the sin will go with you. That's why you repent of your sin now. You give it to Christ. The Bible says his yoke is easy, his burden is light. As he says, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do I get my ears back? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly and hard, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So we find rest in Christ. There's no such thing as resting in peace for a person that doesn't have Christ. So the Bible says the wicked will be tormented day and night, unending. You pick the most resting, place there. resting in peace is when we have Christ. Because the Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are justified by faith. And we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the, the wicked person, the person that dies without Christ, cannot rest in peace. As the Bible says, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth where the worm never dies and the fire is not quenched awaits them. And that place is called hell. So we need Christ to set us free from the torments of hell, to wash us clean of our sin, to give us a new life, we become a new creation by the righteous Lord who requires holiness to enter his kingdom. See, we have a gospel that's preached in this nation that requires unholiness that has a bunch of people in the church that are unconverted, unsaved. That's why the churches are full of the world. They're not set apart. They're full of the world. They're not Christ's bride. They're Christ's enemy. Majority the churches in this country are compromised to the truth of God. They have given heed to the doctrines of devils, seducing spirits. As Paul told Timothy, that's what will happen in the latter times. Many will depart from the faith, the true faith. They will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's what happens. For these false prophets, their conscience are seared with a hot iron. That's what they're looking to do, make more proselytes of more people, more followers, so they can get richer. Now, that's not the gospel, folks. The Bible says your life doesn't consist in the abundance of the things you possess. It doesn't consist of what you know or who you know. It's only if you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If your heart is right with God, not about your skin color. No, God has created one blood. Mankind. It's about your heart condition this day today before God if you are right with God if you are prepared to meet thy God you die at this moment are you prepared to meet thy God Solomon understood at the end of his life he said let us here come to the conclusion of the whole matter let us fear God keep his commandments this is the whole duty of man for God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing that's good or evil so you must understand God is going to judge in righteousness. He's appointed a day in which he will. He's ordained his own son, Jesus Christ. He's committed judgment into his hands. And he's going to judge in righteousness. He's going to judge in truth. 
Today you're being warned if you don't repent of your sin, you'll be judged according to your deeds. The Bible says the tree is known by its fruit. A good tree will not produce evil fruit. An evil tree will not produce good fruit. Ye shall be known by your fruits. The axe is laid to the root of the tree. And whatsoever tree brings forth not good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Folks, this is what the Bible says. We don't produce fruits of righteousness, meaning we don't have Christ. As the Bible says in Ephesians, God has ordained those that are His before the foundation of the world to produce fruits of righteousness. And there's going to be evidence of saving faith in Jesus Christ. There's no evidence, there's no salvation. So understand that today. We need to be saved from our sin today. We can't be saved through a man or of any man. We can only be saved through Christ. One is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The only one that can intercede on your behalf. As the Bible says there's one God and one mediator between God and men. That's the man Christ Jesus. He intercedes. Not your priest at your Catholic church. That would be blasphemous. That would be abominable. Jesus Christ intercedes on your behalf. He paid the sacrifice on behalf of sinners. He went to the cross. He endured the cross, the Bible says, despise the shame, and is sitting down at the right hand of the throne of God. So no, it's not religion. It's a relationship you must have with Christ. May you be tormented in hell day and night. Repent of your sin today and turn to the Savior. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this is the judgment. After this is the judgment. We can't escape the judgment of God. See, either we're going to be rewarded for our service to the Lord or be eternally condemned for living a life contrary to God's word and living in sin. Understand the Bible says the soul that sin shall die. Be sure his sin will find you out. He said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And what a gift it is. What a sacrifice it was. If we just trodden under our feet the Son of God and make His holy commandment in none effect, how much greater punishment awaits. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Would you turn from your sin today and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus says, I am the door. By me you shall enter in and be saved and go in and out and find pasture. The only way we can be saved is through Christ. He who has the Son has life. But this is eternal life. It's not talking about the life you're living now for the lust of the flesh. This is eternal life we get through Christ. The only way is through Him. We keep denying Him and living a life in rebellion and willful sin against Him. All we're doing is treasuring up more wrath for ourselves. Is it surely? The wrath of man will praise God. And the remainder of wrath thou shalt restrain. He's speaking of that day when every knee should bow to him and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So every person is going to bow to Christ. Whether you're a liberal or you're conservative, whether you're a Muslim or you're Buddhist, you're going to bow to Christ. He is the eternal God. He is the everlasting Father. And the question is, are you individually prepared to meet thy God? Not if anyone else is, you individually will face God. We all will meet our Maker, be accountable to our Maker for our life, for our sin. And if we repent of our sin, we give it to Him now while we're breathing. We're not accountable for it any longer. Past, present, and future is gone. We are no longer accountable for our sin when we turn to Christ. He cleanses us from our iniquities and redeems us and sets us free. So we can't, he says, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. You trust in other things, they're not going to save you from the coming of the Lord's wrath. Nothing else can save you from the coming of the Lord's wrath, only Jesus Christ in him alone. He says, how much more abominable is man, how much more as filthy is man that drinks iniquity, like it is water. The Bible says, man drinks iniquity like it is water. He desires to serve sin and said to serve righteousness. Today would you turn from your iniquities. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, to depart from evil, and to serve righteousness. Would you turn to the Savior today? You must be born again. 